Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm joined today by Alfie Indra, and together we're going to rank items that go in a Christmas dinner. So the way this is going to work, Alfie, is we're going to take all the different elements of a Christmas dinner, we're going to give them both a mark out of 100, or average those to give a total average score, and then we'll be able to rank them in order and see how good they are. Okay. So let's start first of all with something that you need to go with everything else, which I'll go first. Gravy. Mm. Uh, and I remember we got anything to put it in, so I thought we'd just drink. Nice, yeah. Drink gravy. This is onion gravy. Alfie's vegetarian, so this way it gives us a balance of, of all interests mm. in this. Thing. This is onion gravy, so it's really vegetarian friendly. Gravy's great. Amazing. Do you know you could just drink gravy? Yes. I will. Have you ever? Uh, yes, I have. Not not in the sense of I've actually poured myself poured myself a drink of gravy, but if there's some gravy there left in the uh, left in the jug, in the, in the jug or you'll the have pan, a little swig. You'll have a little swig. When we rank things here, we need to consider the taste, but also how important they are to the overall feel of the mood of the meal to get a nice okay. sort of mood for the okay. for the thing. So, Alfie, out of a hundred, what are you giving gravy? For me, it, it, it is a necessity. I'm going 92. Oh, that's very high. In mm. my head, I had 81 mm. because it's n useful to be there, but it's not going to carry the meal on its own. So 92 and 81, and this is the average of that. I can't work out in my head. Right, Alfie. Turkey next. You're not going to taste this one because you don't eat uh, meat. Um, I thought we'd start with the sort of main protein mm. elements of it and go from there. I don't want to cook an entire turkey for no reason, so I've just got some turkey breast and fried it. But you'll get the idea of turkey. So we have a little taste. First raw, then I'm going to taste it in the gravy. I think turkey is just a big rubbish chicken. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's not as good as chicken. Chicken's much better. There's a reason we only we don't have turkey all the time. I think people have it at Christmas because it's bigger, and right. if you've got a big family, you can have that. But I have it every year. I think it's it's a Christmassy thing. It's got a lot of history to it, but I don't think it's a great meat. What the, is it flavour flavoursome? I think it's just a little bit. It's a little, not as juicy as chicken. It's just a right. bit. It's a bit rubbish. So I don't think I can give it too high. Really? Because I was thinking honest. if there was a movie, Christmas dinner movie, turkey's probably got the casting role, the lead role of that movie, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna have it this year, but it's just got a lot of prestige in its favour. Yeah. Based purely on the meat, I'd be giving it in the 30s. But because of its position in the meal and the way it can look, the way it's been in Christmas movies, I'm gonna give it 62 out of 100. Quick question, Alfie, what do you like drinking on Christmas Day? I'm glad you asked, Robbie. I like drinking a nice, refreshing beer. Hey! Then why not pick up some from our sponsors, Beer 52. Fancy some free beer this Christmas? Well, you're in luck because my good chums at Beer 52 are offering you a delicious case of craft beer to enjoy during the football and over Christmas. All you have to do is head over to beer52.com forward slash Knox, pay the meagre postage fee of £5.95 and sit back and wait to receive your eight delicious craft beers. Now I've been a member of Beer 52 for a while now and I love it. Every month they send their members a delightful little case of beer from a different part of the world. Now this month they've got a South West England case that is truly something special. Their beer guys, James and Carlos, have pulled up some absolute belters including, for the first time ever in a Beer 52 case, my favourite brewery, Verdant. Yeah, that is unsurprisingly excellent. Lots of nice soft tropical fruits in there. A bit of citrus coming through as well. Yeah, definitely will be enjoying the rest of this with the football. Wild Beer, Arbor Ales and Harbour Brewing also features Beer 52 takes you on a beer odyssey through the southwest. As always, you can learn all about the breweries and the food, landscape and culture of the region in the ever insightful Ferment magazine. If you don't like dark beer, don't worry, you can pick the lights only case and also get some lovely little snacks to enjoy with your nice can of verdant. 
And remember, if at any point you're unsatisfied, you can pause or cancel your subscription, no problem whatsoever. So there's no reason not to go and give Beer52 a go. Head over to beer52.com forward slash knots, that's beer52.com forward slash knots to claim your free case now. Right, Alf, another one that you can't really enjoy here, gammon. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I don't ever have gammon, well, ever really. But a lot of people, when I got the shout, were saying, oh, I have, we have gammon. So I thought, in the interest of science, we'd sample that for it. Good idea. Quite an 80s thing, gammon, I think. Yeah, I've not had it too many times. Yeah. Uh, I remember it being quite salty. Yeah, well, let's have that. I'll try it first its own. It was salty. Mm. Let's try it with the gravy. I think that's mine. I'm still gonna have turkey this year, but for me, that is more enjoyable to eat. Why? Why have the Why are you conforming to the to the Christmas tradition? I don't know. Maybe I need to. I might take a vote in the house. Yeah. I think that's really good. I'm gonna give that a 77. Right, Alfie, nut roast now. Um, is this what you have as a, as a vegetarian on Christmas yeah, Day? I love a nut roast. I do love a nut roast. It's, when you first go vegetarian, it is disappointing. It feels like what other people would have as a side. I see what you mean. I do but, have it as a side sometimes when, my wife, yeah. when I make it for my wife. It's cut into wow. it, you get into the meat of it. This is just a store-bought nut roast. Goodness me. Okay, I'm just gonna put a bit of nut roast on your Please plate. Please do. I think it's, it's good. It's a nice thing. I think it gets extra marks because it's something that's useful to have on the table for inclusivity. Some mm. can have it as a main, some can have it as a side dish, a lot of things. It's nice to get a nice good bit of crunch, feel a little bit healthy yeah. when you're eating it. Yeah. I am going to give it a 68. For me, Obviously, this is a very important part of the meal for me. Mm. Otherwise, I've just got potatoes and veg. So I, I need it. So you can rate it highly and push it up on behalf of all vegetarians? I think I'm gonna have to do I I'm gonna say now, I'd be lying if I said that tastes as good as some gammon. Yeah. It doesn't, no. all right? It doesn't. If you think it does, you're a weirdo. However, as a replacement, it's very good. I'm going to give it an 80. Nice, good. So overall, that's that. Right, I'll feel classic now of uh, a Sunday roast and I guess that's what Christmas is. A big Sunday roast, isn't it? Although not as a Sunday. Stuffing, mm. sage and onion stuffing here. Mm. So again, vegetarian. Friendly. Initial thoughts? I do. I like it. I like a stuffing, especially sage and onion stuffing. Yeah. I think this could be one where, if there was no stuffing, and a plate was served for me, I don't know if I'd notice. Okay, interesting. I think I would object. Let me taste it. If I'm having beef, mm -hmm. I would do Yorkshire puddings, but I wouldn't do them with chicken. Whereas chicken, I would have stuffing and also pigs in blanket. And, okay. And that. So okay. I've got, I'm fairly traditional in that respect. I would say, I really like stuffing, but again, is it is it is it essential? No, maybe not. I'm gonna give it, it can be too dry sometimes as well. Yeah, this, this is nice. nice. This, this is, is nice, good, yeah. not overly done. I'm gonna give this 58. Uh, we've gone nearly bang on. I was gonna give it a 55. Okay. Well, then but do I do it. feel a bit bad because it is it is it is very nice. It is nice, but it's not essential. No. We're on to one of the big dogs now, Alfie. These here here are roast potatoes. I rate my roast potato game. Really? They do look very crunchy on the outside, soft in the middle. Okay, these are my perfect ones, but they're decent. Mm -hmm. King Edward potatoes. Slightly more than parboil. These are probably only just parboil, slightly more. Then shake them up as much as you can in the pan. Drain the water, shake them up in the pan as much as you can without them falling apart. It's a real tough game. How, 
how much guts, how close to the wire can you get with your potatoes without them disintegrating? Wow. So that's the technique. These were probably only just slightly parboiled dish. So let's have a go. Grab yourself a potato. Thank you. See what you think. Do you like a roast? See, this is the thing I'm going to wind a lot of people up here. I do like it. I, I do feel as though they're a bit overhyped flavour wise. I think it's elite. I think these, because we've been doing this, those have been sat there, type of bit. they're not their ultimate cr crunchiness, but even still, I think they're absolutely fantastic. I'm going to give roast potato a very high mark of 94. <laughs> it's going to end in a fight. Go on. I, these are very good. Thank you. I know. They're I don't need. Good. I don't no, need. No, but your... I, do, I am going to tell you that. Yeah, but I don't. I know, I know they are. I don't need. I let curious. me tell you, these are very good, and I will tell you that. But I feel as though they are a less flavoursome parsnip. I'm sorry. I do. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I do feel like that. A parsnip's got so much about it. It's sweet. It's sort of a similar texture. A potato. It's just a. It's just a nice texture that carries the gravy, is it not? Is it not? Is it no, not? It's not. It's not, okay. But, what's your mark? I'm not going to go super low here. I'm going to go 63. Does that upset you? Go on. <laughs> so Alfie, here is your more flavoursome potato. A parsnip. We can take the first choice there. Thank you. Let so me know your thoughts on the. What, what, your, what your initial thoughts? Well, I think there's two different things here. Two different the sizes. They they make it differ so much. It's like a different element, in my opinion. I guess there's two ways of looking at that. Either it's a failing of the vegetable that there's one bit that gets really crispy and one bit that's quite <laughs> meaty, or two dishes in one. Depends on whether you're a glass half full. What if you don't, what if you don't like crispy empty? stuff and you like sort of thin stuff? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, no, you said earlier, and, and don't get me wrong, I like parsnips. You said earlier that it's, it's worse than a roast potato. I used to, when I was younger, get annoyed if I thought I was picking up a roast potato, they're mixed together and you got a parsnip. Oh, I'd be delighted. <laughs> I'd be absolutely delighted if well, that happened. We are different. I'm going to say, I'm going to give this 44. What? That's that you're just saying you're I'm saying not. that for the video. You're saying that to get some drama in the video. I'm not. I make them because it's a traditional thing. But I would not bother if I didn't eat an old pass again. I'd never care. I'm gonna I'm gonna double yours and give it an eighty eight. Okay. How do you like that? Showing business. Right, Alfie, pigs and blankets time, but I've got you a special treat. Vegan pigs oh and blankets. Oh my gosh. I've got... never, ever had these. I saw them for the first time in Asda the other day, and I got these ones from Waitrose. So, it's my, it's my local supermarket, don't worry, it's not. That's oh, right. Thank you, Bit. So, you, <laughs> you can get your, um, you can get that one, I'll get this one, we'll get stuck in. Cheers. I think what I'm going to do is have a bit of each component and then together. Okay. Let's start with the meat one, first mm. of all. I think pigs in blanket are excellent. I think they're a relatively new thing. I don't remember as a kid ever having pigs in blanket. I remember having rolled up bacon and sausages, but they weren't combined into one foodstuff. I think it might be an American import. I think it's an excellent import. I really would be disappointed if I had a Christmas meal and there were no pigs in blanket. Mm. Um, I'd still have a traditionalist. Even with gammon now, I think I would, I would still be disappointed. I think it's a Christmassy tradition. I do think maybe they're not always as good as I think they're going to be. Right, the idea is better than the... I think the concept's reality. great, I'm a person who loves sausages. I think the concept is sometimes better than reality, so I'm going to give Pigs in Blanket 73. Okay, I like that. As you say, the, the cons I remember loving them hmm. when I when I was a meat eater. Right. Yeah, please try. Yeah, I'm going to try the veggie one, see what you think. The, you, you'll have to sit, cause I haven't had real sausage and bacon in so long that I've forgotten, you know, I, I wouldn't know a good sausage if it slapped me in the face, as it were. Uh, not in that way, mm. but um, but for me, it's delicious. I'd, I'd be really surprised because 
the people who make my Christmas dinners. I don't think they know these exist, really. No, who so, are the people who make Christmas dinners? My parents. Okay. I don't think they really know. <laughs> you made it sound like you had a staff. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go 65. All right. Over four. Right, Alfie, we're not going to go through every single vegetable individually. That would take far too long, and quite frankly, that could be another video for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, there is one vegetable that is synonymous with Christmas, the humble Brussels sprout, a controversial vegetable, mm. so I'm very keen to hear how this goes. Put one there Thank for you. Thank you very much. More in the middle if you want more. Let's sample it with the gravy as well. Yeah. Look, I have them every year. That's the only day I'll have them. I do not know how they have got their place on a Christmas dinner table. On a Christmas dinner, I don't. I feel like the first caveman who ever had one would taste it and go, "That is bitter." Mm. I'm not eating any more, and then it should have stopped there. No more sprouts in the history of humanity. But somehow people must like them because somehow it's it's made its way on. But I just do I just do not get it. Give us a score then. 20. I think sprouts are an amazing vegetable and I have it so often at this time of year. I think the problem is people cook sprouts badly. They overcook them, they become mushy and as you say, bitter. You can pan fry sprouts, you can roast. I, I pan fry them quite a lot. For Christmas year. dinner you pan fry No, not for Christmas dinner, but in general mm. you can. I think there's do about sprouts in general, but I think they're absolutely fantastic. Um, Pair nicely with pancetta or chestnuts oh, or things yeah, like that. Yeah, but that's like saying if I covered it in chocolate and sugar and deep fried it, I'd like it. We're talking about the sprout, we're not talking I'm about talking it. about it as a vegetable here, I'm yeah. not saying this. In the Christmas dinner, I'd be fuming if it wasn't there. <laughs> Absolutely fuming. Yeah, I, I can accept it's probably not up there with the pea in terms mm. of peas and uh, uh, in terms of vegetable, but it's a very good, very good vegetable. I'm gonna say Partly for its tradition, which lifts it a bit, and partly was the taste. I'm going to give it an 86. <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. Because of your score, the yeah, average goes right down. <laughs> right, Alfie, this is something I don't have on a Christmas dinner Ooh. because of my aforementioned pairing rules. I say, some of you people who are having. Uh, Someone will say they had two different types of potato, one roasted in fresh oil, one in duck fat, potato for different people, had a meat, uh, they had stuffing, they had uh, uh, pigs in blankets, they had they ate the Yorkshire pudding, they had all these different things. You've got a massive oven. Yeah. You've got a lot of oven space. Mm. That's privilege talking there. Mm. Uh, I know you can rotate things, but I'm, I'm an expert at this. I have a spreadsheet at Christmas Day, but that comes from a position of privilege. You should check that or something. Yorkshire puddings. Easy to make Yorkshire puddings. I bought these ones because of lack of time, but so easy to make. I don't know why. How do you make, make them? Make a batter, which I've got like flour and you milk. Love, and you lost me already. Make a batter. Milk, okay. Mix milk and flour, salt and pepper, maybe an egg. I can't remember exactly. You can find a recipe. It takes seconds to do. Yeah. Things to do. And then a bit of oil in a, in a Yorkshire pudding pan. The key is get the oil as hot as you possibly can before you put things in, otherwise it'll be rubbish. Okay. But yeah, also great Yorkshire pudding for me. Mm. Look, it's a good food. Mm. I'm just not sure. I think you need some kind of limit on what goes with things, otherwise it's too hard for people with small ovens. That puts me off a bit. What are your thoughts? I. I do get the privileged, you know, call me privileged. Yeah. I like a Yorkshire pudding on Christmas Day. I do. I don't have a big oven, so I don't know how that works. All right, Rishi Sunak. Sorry, I didn't <laughs> that, pick it. No, 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 no. Because he's Prime Minister. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> I think, um, I, th I think you're a bit out of order saying it doesn't go with things. What doesn't it go with? Why does this go with gammon more than turkey? Tradition. Oh, Where are we without tradition? tradition? <laughs> You're off fox hunting after this, are you? Actually, yes. <laughs> Nut roast is a bit like stuffing. Potatoes, parsnips, the veg. This, it's like, what? 
What's this? I don't think it's a million miles from stuffing. It's still got that breadiness to it. You know what I mean? The sort Yorkshire of puddings are not flowery. a million. No, no. That, they're going to have a field day with you in the comments for that one. <laughs> Yorkshire are. puddings are like stuffing. Well, but stuffing isn't like nut roast. Suppose it is a bit. <laughs> yeah. what, are you giving, what, are you, what mark are you giving it? And remember, you're marking it in its place in a Christmas dinner. Yeah. No, I'm well aware. I, <laughs> you're trying to get my mark down. I'm not. You are. I'm going to go. Yorkshire pudding, 84. If you were having roast beef as your Christmas meal, which is well within your rights, we've not included it here. And by the way, if you're going, oh, we always, you haven't included mashed potato because we always have that at our family meal. Your family's weird, mate. Mm. If it's not on here, your family's weird. Yeah, I agree. Um, I just, I'm not, I like a Yorkshire pudding. I, I'm not fussed if it's not there on Christmas Day. I definitely don't want it to be there on Christmas Day, in fact. <laughs> I'm going to give it 60. Okay, hey, there is one condiment that is, I'd say, exclusively a Christmas thing, and that is cranberry sauce. Do you ever have it outside of Christmas, Alfie? Um, I think I would do, yeah. I, I think I will do on the occasional roast. Is it, is it very exclusively Christmas to you? Yeah, to me, I'd say cranberries are a Christmassy thing. I've made my own cranberry sauce before, and very nice. It's nice. Yeah. I don't know what it. I never think. Oh, this needs a bit of cranberry. Yeah. With a lot of stuff. Or maybe turkey because it's so rank. <laughs> um, but yeah. What are your it, thoughts? I think it's strange. It's essentially jam, isn't it? We just have jam on our main course. Yeah. <laughs> it only tastes a bit with a past if as an experiment. Um. It's not improved the past if at all. No. It just makes it taste of jam. I'm gonna give cranberry sauce 11. Whoa, you hate it then? I don't hate it, I just don't, it's weird. I'll give it 21. An average of, Alexa, what's the average of 11 and 21? 1,121. Brilliant. Right, have we covered Brussels sprouts because it's a particularly Christmassy mm thing. Let's just do, rather than rate every veg in the world, let's just do generic veg. Here's yeah. a mix of like beans and peas and sweet corn in here. Carrots would be a welcome addition as well. Mm -hmm. Let's just rate the concept of generic veg for a Christmas meal. Mm. I love veg. Mm. It's interesting because if there was no veg on a plate, I'd be like, I don't eat this. It's one of the rare times over Christmas you get something healthy and you need to leap on that. So I will put, I'll do probably about a third of my plate with generic, a plate of generic oh, really? fish, like this sort of thing. I'll try wow. to, and then I'll probably just pile more <laughs> stuffing on top and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I do try and go hard, but also, it's just generic veg, isn't it? Yeah. So it's hard to be too excited about it. You can't do. I'm gonna say, it's slightly above average, I'm gonna say 60. Nice, yeah, I, <clears throat> I, I always eat my veg first. Um, oh. I've done it since I was a kid, I just, Get it out. I eat veg every day. Just get it out of the way when you get to the good bit. I would much rather a plate with everything else. Right. However, as you say, it's not the same without it. Yeah. There's something about it that just keeps drawing you back in. For me, it's a 65. Score. Cool. Right, Alfie, we've come to the end of our Christmas meal rating. And whilst it's not something you'd serve with the main course, I've had to include Christmas pudding. Yeah. We're gonna put on it some bra extra thick brandy cream as well. Happy with that? Oh, absolutely, wow. Ooh. Oh, it's actually so thick that you're gonna- Spooned out, here we go. Right, there we go, on your top. Oh, it's sliding off. I really like Christmas pudding. I like that it tastes slightly of alcohol -y, but you can give it to kids, it's fine. Mm. I like, a lot of texture. What I will say is the same as turkey for me. If it was that good, you wouldn't have it once a year. Yeah, agreed. Your thoughts? I think you're right. It, it tastes of Christmas. It's not, you know, what would you rather have? This or like a chocolate cake, an apple crumble, a sticky toffee pudding. You'd probably not choose this if it was on the menu. However, it's just one of those things you've got to do, and I, and I don't mind it. Don't mind it at all. You need it yeah. in a Christmas meal. Yeah. But again, it's not essential, so I'm going to give it 
I just said you need it, but it's not essential. That makes no sense. <laughs> I, I, you need it, but it's not that great overall. You know, more often I'm going to give it a nice three quarter mark, seventy five. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm going to go similar. I was. I was going to go. Mm. I'll go sixty eight. Okay. Nice. Been quite drunk, have you had one's been? Yeah, I know. Right, Alfie, I've got the final scores here. We're now going to run down in order from worst thing to okay. best. A Christmas meal. Okay. In last place, it's cranberry sauce. Fair enough. Won't dispute it. Second, twelfth place, and this is all because of you. It's sprouts. Good. Very unfair. Eleven stuffing on fifty-six and a half. Okay. And sixty-two points in tenth place. It's turkey. Wow. Generic veg comes in at number nine with sixty-five, and it's at number eight. It is the parsnip on sixty-six. Hard done. Bro. Pigs in Blanket on 69, number 7, and on 71.5 points, number 6, it's Christmas Pudding. Into the top 5 now, for some reason Yorkshire Pudding is in at number 5 Come on. on 72. Number 4 is Nut Roast, a great performance oh, from wow. an, a, an underrated thing. the Champions League. Thing, yeah, kind of Champions League place. 74 points. Gammon is the highest ranking main dish thing with 77 points. Roast Potatoes comes in second on 78 and a half points, but the winner Possibly because we did it first and didn't really think through the scoring system, is gravy on 86 <laughs> half points, some distance from second place. But to be fair, anything that you missed out here, apart from maybe roast potato for me, I'd go, oh, all right, fine. But if you don't have any gravy, I'd be going, this is disgusting. Yeah, that's so maybe true. gravy is the correct answer. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right. I think that is the one thing you'd still be waiting, waiting, wouldn't you? Yeah. Where's, where's, the, where's the gravy? Congratulations to gravy being the one thing you must not forget at your Christmas meal. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what your um, thoughts are on Christmas dinner and if there's something mental that you eat. Um, cheers for watching. Thank you, Alfie, for coming out of my house and Thank eating you. food. And uh, get that Beer 52 offer. Great little deal for you. Cheers. Merry Christmas. Back with another video soon.